Okay, we're going to take a look at a question that's on the practice worksheet number two. This is on page five. It's question number three. Question uh, is, what is the limit as h approaches zero of 8 over x plus h to the 12 minus 8 over x to the 12 over all over h? So in, in reality, there's actually probably two ways of solving this problem. And there, there's a insanely easy way if you're good at seeing patterns here, or there's going to be a rather long way. And uh, depending upon how I ask you to do this question, uh, you may have to do the short way or the long way. Now, um, let's first look at the easy way. Okay, so so the the easy way here would be to say, well, wait a minute. Uh, this looks awfully familiar. And really, does doesn't this actually look like the same thing as the limit of delta x approaching zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. And if you compare the two, well, if I replaced h with a delta x, then this would be the, this function, but the x being replaced with x plus delta x, which in fact is f of x plus delta x. So really, uh, what am I looking at? Um, well, this is the definition of a derivative uh, using a limit, which means uh, if I if I if I want to, I can just simply say, well, aren't I really just simply saying, you see, that f of x is equal to eight over x to the power of twelve. Therefore, what is f prime of x? And really, this is this becomes really, really simple. Because this is just simply 8 times x, um, 8x to the negative 12. And if I use the power rule, that would make uh, this be, well, negative 12 times 8. That's going to be, what, negative 96. Uh, times x to the negative 11. And I'm done. That is it. I'm finished. Now, that's, like I said, the easy way of doing it. Now, what if I actually say, you know what, you're not allowed to use uh, power rule. You have to you have to use the definition of a limit, which means you have to go through this by using limits only. Ooh, okay, so what would that look like? So right now, we're just going to pretend that... Uh, this never happened. It's just this never happened. And now I'm just going to jump right into using the limit only. Now, if I was going to look at this as a limit, uh, well, let's see. This is going to be equal to, once again, the limit as h approaches zero of what? Now, hmm. my first thing is to get a common denominator of this these two fractions. So that is going to be, well, it's going to be the two of these. Uh, multiplied together, which would be, you see, x to the 12 uh, times x plus h to the 12 as well, all over, I mean, sorry, all under, all under. What's on the top? That would be 8x times x to the 12 minus 8 times x plus h to the 12. And don't forget, though, this is all over h. But you know what, I kind of hmm, really want to do that. Uh, I want to look at this a little differently. I'm going to say that rather than saying divide by h, I'm going to say that's multiplying by 1 over h. And that lets me know what I'm probably going to be up to. I, I want to do something where a lot of h's cancel out a lot of my terms. So let's just see what we got. First off, at the bottom, I'm going to, I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to ignore it. I think I can anyway. I think it's I think it's safe to say that if I put an h into there, what am I going to end up getting? Uh, if h approaches zero, I'm going to get an x to the 12 multiplied by well x plus h, which is x plus zero. So that's just going to be another x to the 12. So the bottom I don't have to worry about. It's it's gonna it's gonna be safe. It's gonna be safe as long as this h somehow gets uh, removed. So what I'm hoping to do is get it up here somehow, get it to 
cancel out a bunch of things and cancel itself out while I'm at it. So what I want to do is I want to figure out this thing. So for the moment, I'm going to I'm going to ignore all of this and just look at the top only. 8x to the 12 minus 8 times x plus h to the 12. Now it's it's going to be the x plus h to the 12 that is giving me trouble. And I have to figure out what to do with that. Now, what you want to try to remember is, do you remember, do you remember Pascal's triangle? Because this, at this point, would be helping you an awful lot. Because as you remember, I don't, let's just pretend you do, but remember that the triangle, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, and on and on and on, is also a code. It is a code of how to do binomial expansion because remember this is here this is nothing more than a binomial and so what we're looking at whoops oh my god that's not very good let me erase that write that again this is a binomial so in other words uh if i have uh, a plus b to the zero, it's going to use these coefficients. This is going to be a plus b to the one, a plus b to the power of two, etc., 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 etc. And so each of these numbers is the coefficient goes in front of that term. Now, how do I know which term is which? Well, remember that I'm going to arrange this. So let's just say, let's just say I did this one. I would say, well, how does that work out? That is, that is going to be equal to a plus b to the fourth. So I'm going to have, let me see, how would I set up? I'm going to start off with an a to the fourth. I'm going to be adding a a3, one less than the one before it, and then I'm going to bring in a b to the one, which is just simply b. Remember, there is a b here. It's just a b to the zero, which is just b to the power of 0 is 1, so I just left with the a to the 4 alone. And then you'll just notice the pattern is pretty easy after a while. a2, b2, plus a1, uh, I don't have to say 1, a, just a, a, b cubed, uh, and b fourth. And the question is, well, what goes in front of everything? Well, if I just look at these and I realize, well, there's my 4, there's my 6, there's my 4, and then this is the whole thing. This is actually what this is, whole thing is equal to. And it's quite easy, as long as you figure out what all those numbers are. And the question is, like, how do you figure that out? Well, actually, these numbers, let's just, let's just go back here. The 1, the 4, the 6, the 4, and the 1 refer to what we call combinations. So in other words, because this is the fourth row, this is also equal to a um, thing called a combination. Four combination zero. This would be also four combination one. And then the next number would be four combination two, four combination three, and lastly, four, oh, I'm going to write it very small, four combination four. And so to get these numbers, you will find that 4 is actually equal to 4 combination 1. This is actually equal to the number 4. How do you get it? How do you get that? Well, let's just um, look at that for a moment. Um, basically, this is equal to uh, 4 factorial. Now remember, I showed you what factorials were, so that shouldn't be too crazy multiplied by this number, which would be 1 factorial, times, in brackets, 4 minus 1 factorial. That's how you get them. That's how you get them. So this is the general formula. So if you're not even sure what row to do, you have a few ways of doing this. You could either keep making all your triangles, just keep going down, keep going down until I reach the, well, what am I looking for? The 12th row, the 12th uh, power. Uh, I could do that, or I could just simply say what I'm looking for is uh, basically starting uh, with the first one, it will be 12C1, and then it will be 12C, sorry, 12C0, 
and the next one will be 12C1, 12C2, 12C3, and on and on and on until I finally get 12C12. So I will get uh, 13 different terms, and I configured all those numbers. So if I can calculate that, I can either create the triangle. Like I said, you could do the triangle and go down until you reach uh, the 12th row and just find out what are the numbers. That's one way of doing it. This isn't very hard to do, right? I can just simply say, okay, I got 1, 5, 10, um, whoops, 10, 5, and 1, and okay, keep going, keep going, keep going, on and on and on and on. I can do that, um, but I'm going to just do it a little differently. I'm going to just simply say, so this will be, what is this now equal to? This, this thing is going to be equal to First, 8x12 is just 8x12, that's right, minus 8 times. Now, I'm just looking at H, x plus h12. So, the first term will be x to the 12, then it'll be plus. What do I got? Well, x11, h, x to the 10, h squared, plus. And then um, I'll do one more, x to the 9, h3. Now this is going to keep going. Uh, I, and if I was going to do all this all for you, I would go through every single term until the very end. The very last thing I'll get will be h to the 12. That will be the last term. Now, the only thing missing is what are the numbers that go in front of everything. Well, I know that the first number is going to be 1. If you notice with the triangle, the first term is all always one. In fact, the last term, I even know what the last term is, it's always one also. Now there's a reason why I'm not showing you all of these things. And if you think about it, you kind of know what's going to happen because all of these have an H in them, which means when I multiply by one over H, I'm going to get a whole bunch of these things canceling out, which is going to be beautiful. That's what I want. That's what I really want. And hopefully I can get um, just H is to go. That's that's hopefully if I have every term on the top to be an H. Let's see what happens. So that means if I'm going to find out the number, that means the the, the number. Let me see. I'm just going to show this point. I'm looking for what's here and then here, and I want to know what's here in front of that and in front of that and on and on and on. But remember, I am using uh, the combinations 12C0. This would be 12C1, this would be 12C2, 12C3. And if you notice, you can do this on your calculator. Your calculator has the ability to do combinations, which means you can find out that this equals 1, uh, this equals 12, this equals 66, this equals 220, and on and on and on and on and on. And by the way, when this one equals 1. Uh, which is, just so it's clear, this is 12C12, and that is equal to 1. Uh, there's a reason why 12 com uh, combination 0 is equal to 12 combination 12. Um, you might want to see what happens when you plug it into this equation over here um, and see what happens if you do either uh, 12C0 or 12C12. What does it look like in both cases? And you'll see, oh, oh wait, now I see why it's both 1. Uh, but I'm not going to get into that because I'm not trying to teach you combinations. I'm just showing you the tool that you can use here. So what are we going to get? What are we going to get? Which means this is going to get kind of long. So let's go back to the original equation here. Uh, I'm going to move everything up a bit. Let's see. Here we go. So I am looking for the limit as h approaches 0. Oh, now what do I got? 8x squared minus now everything now that I've taken everything away I'm gonna have to say okay minus 8 times x squared whoops I said squared I shouldn't say squared it's to the 12 uh, minus you see that's that's a 12 so 12 times 8 that's minus 96 x to the 11 h minus um, 8 times 66 Six. Hmm. That's um, sixty-six times eight. That's uh, five twenty-eight, and that'll be times x to the ten h to the 
uh, 2 minus, no, 220, to, uh, shoot, 220, you know what, I need it. I can't do it, I can't do it, I'm a dummy. 220 times 8, I get woo, 1,760, so that would be minus 1,760 x to the 9, h to the 3, plus dot, 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 um, all the way till I reach the end, which would be minus 8 h 12. All of that, let me see, whoa, okay, times x to the 12 all over x plus h uh, to the 12, and don't forget that little thing I had at the end, this whole thing is being multiplied by 1 over h. Wow, okay, so let's just start thinking about this, because there's a reason why I didn't write out everything, there's a reason. Um, mainly it's because of a few things. First off, take a look at what's going to happen. 8x to 12 minus 8x. Okay, so these cancel, immediately cancel. So now I'm left with all of this. And what's going to happen is that when I multiply by the h, I am going to drop all of my h's by 1. And that pretty well leaves me with only one term. This person right here, person, this number right here, is the only one among everything that's in the entire list that will have no H in it. What does this mean? Well, remember what we're doing. We're doing the limit as H approaches zero, which means this means the limit will equal, well, wait a minute, let's let H equal zero. What happens? I can just plug in zero, which means everything will turn to zero. Everything except the first term, negative 96 x to the 11. And this is all over. Now, wait a minute. What happened here? The h went to 0. So what do I got down there? x to the 24. Okay, well, shoot, I can just divide these. That's, that, that's just the same as saying that's equal to negative 96 times x to the power of 11 minus 24. That's just, that's all I have to do. I'm just subtracting the exponents. And what do I get? Negative 96 x to the minus 13. What was the answer we got? Wait, wait, did I say 13? 13. Yes, I did. Wait, look at that. Did anyone see that? I made a mistake at the very beginning. Oof, good thing I did it the long way. So the answer up here should be because it's one less than negative 12. That's actually x to the negative uh, 13. Oopsie. Okay, I hope, hopefully someone saw that right away. Um, ah, I make a mistake all the time. Hopefully you have better, better calculating skills than I do. So as you can see, let's just go back to this anyway. Uh, as you can see that through all this work, um, I can solve it. It's, it's not exactly an easy way of doing it, but in the end, provided you know how to do a binomial expansion, this actually worked out really well. It actually worked out where I didn't, once I knew, once I knew what was happening up in the front, uh, the rest of the stuff is just going to go away as H approaches zero because I have all these H's in front of everything. So it becomes quite easy. Uh, hope that helped. Take a look at it, go back through it, make sure you understand what I did. It's the kind of question I might ask you. You are supposed to know combinations in Pascal's triangle for my work here in calculus, so make sure you know it. That's all I have to say there. And uh, I'm going to go on and do the next question.